G'day everybody, welcome back to Living on Two Acres, Queensland. And this video is a part one of a tour of the garden we created here on our two acres in subtropical Queensland, Brisbane. Um, now, our property here is about 2.2 acres, just over a hectare basically. And um, in a way, how our property is laid out, we have two gardens the upper garden, which is here. And there's also a lower garden, which is there behind the house. So today I'm just going to do a walk over of the upper garden and just show you what I got here, share with you some of my successes and, the and you know, of course, some of my failures, which I'm pretty keen to talk about because I would love to hear some advice as to whether you, anyone of you, any of you had um, any sort of similar problems to mine. And if you have suggestions how you overcame those problems um, do let me know in the comments and generally please leave your comments i'd love to hear what you um, have done and just to have a general discussion now um, i'm relatively new to this uh, garden i only had this property for about three years i did manage to plant quite a few trees already but still i'm relatively um, I could, I could say I am a novice at this old gardening scene, so, you know, I had some successes as well as some failures. failures. So um, let's get on with it and um, hope you'll enjoy this. Now, just to start here, so we bought this property, as I say, about three and a half years ago. We had some structures here already when we bought this, so there was an old Aussie shed was it like a two-car shed there this is the old house that we had here already this is probably about 50 years old but it's all asbestos so there's nothing wrong with it it's not going anywhere <laughs> it's in a pretty good nick we did do some um, refreshments and cosmetics cosmetic repairs to it but it's perfectly livable house and uh, at the front here initially when we bought this we just had lily peelies growing at the front of this deck I would say they probably planted it to um, create some shade, but we ripped it all out and um, we just created a small garden here. <laughs> because um, that deck is actually very nice when it has afternoon sun on it. Some don't like sun, but I really used to enjoy coming out here with a cup of coffee in the morning and even in the afternoon. Really enjoyed living here while we were building the other house down further down our property so um, just quickly show you um, we got tomatoes here we um, ended up planting a lot of cherry tomatoes we find them most resistant to disease and most productive and they keep fruiting for a long time and they grow really vigorously as you can see uh, at the start on this um, concrete mesh here we had the blackberry and growing but it's um, spiky and um, you know we didn't get much fruit off it we didn't look after it all that much so we just got rid of it and now we just have cherries here further there that's the mandarin tree this is probably the best type of mandarin tree you could have i really love those they're easy to peel they're juicy sweet there's relatively few seeds in it and it fruits abundantly i must say this is the second harvest and you can see the tree is um the tree is tied there with a bit of a support because last year it had so much fruit it actually split but we managed to salvage that and it seems to be doing okay and this mandarin tree been here for probably two two and a half years obviously i bought it as a plant established plant already but it was very very small so it grows real fast i highly recommend the mandarins for um our area they love our climate and doing very well i'm not sure what uh type of mandarin this is i want to say imperial but i can't be wrong um, at the bottom there you can see we used to um we had a pineapple there which wasn't very large but it was very sweet so pineapples is something that i plant all the time when i get the pineapple i prefer to buy them with the green tops on the top so i can just you know detach those from pineapple chuck it in the water for a little while it roots up and then you just stick it in the ground and forget about it as long as it gets some water and you know plenty of sunshine you'll get good pineapples i reckon and here we have some strawberries 
we did have a harvest uh, wasn't too bad but lately um, the possum got in here and he just munches because there's nothing else to eat I guess for him so he munches on the strawberry plants and you can see I'm trying to catch the bugger and just relocate him into nature reserve nearby but he's been pretty smart avoiding this trap he actually lives in the birdhouse in the lower garden that we have there I can see him he's sitting there right now sleeping but he's um I'd say he's a cunning one because um, he avoids the trap and just munches on tomatoes and the strawberries here and he comes here regularly you can see that he poops on here all the time so he must have been through here he ate one of the tomato plants again probably because there's nothing to eat this here is just a raspberry um, this year we didn't water it as good as we should have so it's not looking very joyful but there's some uh, raspberries here we do you know harvest maybe like a glass full every couple of weeks I'd say and um, you know we probably have to look after it a bit better for the next season to make sure we get more but um, yeah we still have a few berries of it this here is a rosella plant we love rosellas they grow very well and the drink you can make out of it is just beautiful and also it's very good for jams there's a few recipes for those you can look it up online and the jam is just oh, delicious absolutely um, we um, make um, quite a bit when we have a harvest I'll show you this um, bit here that's last season's rosella you can't see it very well but it's already sort of dying off a bit we just keep some of these for seeds because they don't seem to be um, propagating very well so we have to plant a lot just to get a few plants and um, yeah as I said we love them and uh, this here is a gooseberry plant the um, it's not growing very well here it doesn't like full sun but um, still it's not even doing very well here so I don't know what's gonna come up with it. it's just barely surviving here so that's the little garden here and um, that's just a quick overview of the upper garden now when we bought this there were a couple of well I should say maybe four trees uh, actually six trees on this property already and the rest of it was just like an empty um, lawn so all these trees you see we have planted in the last two years and I'll show you some of them doing really really well and so this is one of the um, trees that was here I would say it's probably it, it has to be over 15 or 20 years old and that is a gramichama tree hopefully I'm saying it right it's basically like a cherry type sort of thing and it you know fruits abundantly in the season and the cherries are real real nice of it it's not like your normal cherry uh, but still very very beautiful fruit the only thing is they have a lot of uh, fruit beds here and they just love them as well and as soon as it, you know fruits um, there's like a bunch of them hanging around and you know the branches and in the night you can hear them uh, munching on the um, fruit uh, also possum often comes in and you can see at night as well when when he's there there's a lot of cracking going on he cracks the seeds and basically loves them as well but we still managed to get quite a few berries out of it because it's a big tree now this here I'm just gonna walk around so I'm not standing against the sun you can see this is a black supporter apparently or like a chocolate pudding tree they call it now this fruit is far from ready yet um, we don't expect it to be um, ripe for quite a few months yet this year we had um, a lot of fruit on it let's see how many will survive but for anyone who never had a black supporter or chocolate pudding fruit it's very beautiful when it fully ripens inside it's basically like a chocolate mousse you eat it um, with a spoon it's delicious it's sweet really nice taste and um, once it starts to fruit I might have to do a video just to show you guys what it looked like because uh, um, it's a very weird fruit I never seen it before I bought this property but 
once I had a chance to taste it, I you know just fell in love with it. And there's a lot of fruit on it now. It drops one or two every now and then, probably um, as a normal sort of thing for the tree to drop off some, but there's heaps this year on it. I'm really looking forward to harvesting these. And now this, this here is amazing tree as well. This is called Jabaticaba, or I think it's also called Brazilian uh, grape. I can be wrong, but um, I think that's it. And this is a wonderful tree. It's very ornamental, like it's got a beautiful uh, trunks here. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, uh, Jabaticaba tree before. And what's so peculiar about that, it actually, when it fruits, all these trunks are covered with big black berries and um, I'll just show you there's a if I can just zoom on to that that's basically a future flower so it's out of season now but um, when it flowers it is it is covered with these flowers all over the trunk and you know then it develops into the beautiful beautiful berries they I personally don't enjoy eating them straight off the tree I um, boil them in the water and it makes a beautiful beautiful refreshing drink I just can't get enough of it but um, again unfortunately this year there was a big harvest it actually had two big harvests but every time the lorry kids came and just descended on the tree and just spoil the whole harvest to be honest they don't eat it completely they just munch on it a little bit or just drop it down and they spoil the entire harvest for us <laughs> so i might have to net this tree next season to make sure i actually get some fruit of it because it's very very nice so that's the tree this is another tree here this is actually a pest apparently this is african tulip tree and you can see there's some red flowers there and it's very very beautiful when it flower flowers it's covered with those flowers and looks spectacular but the roots of this tree they go really really far underground and i can actually see some roots right under the deck there and it actually sends the shoots out of those roots i'm sure it's all everywhere under the house as well i would probably prefer to cut them down they are classified by our local council as a pest tree but there's still quite a few around on the streets they must have been planting them some time ago before they you know put a bit of thought into what they're doing this tree is also known for um, poisoning uh, local native bees uh, because the flowers contain some sort of um, uh, something in them that intoxicates the bees once they get inside and they just you know die and after that um, I do have a couple of native bee hives on my property I can't say they all died because of this tree which was my initial fear when I was just getting into the native bees so the bee people that I've spoken to they say told me not to be too alarmed by that because I'm it's not gonna kill off my entire hive and that seems to be the case but yeah that's the um, African tulip tree apparently and it's huge so that's it there and now going into the garden this here is a jackfruit tree like jackfruit is a weird fruit you may have seen it looks kind of like a hedgehog I suppose this is relatively young we haven't had any harvests of it but it's um those fruit at least what I know, um, they, they're good for cooking. They, they kind of taste like a cooked cabbage when you um, cook them. I planted one just to have one because I like to have diversity and just different fruit. And you can see there is a small fruit here, but I'm just not sure whether that's gonna mature or not. It's, it might just drop it off because it's still pretty young, but when they grow, the full size is easily the size of human head or larger. Um, it's an interesting fruit and as I said you can cook it with a bit of a, with a few spices depends how you like it and it's tasting nice kind of like as I said as a cooked cabbage this is pomegranate this is a wonderful pomegranate and um, this is only a couple of years old 
as you can see I trimmed it on the bottom because it had a few shoots out of the ground but this one I want to keep as just a single tree so I cut it all off and we're looking forward to see what's it gonna grow up like because normally pomegranates have two or three trunks coming out of the ground and that's normal but we decided to do this one like that and you can see all of my trees are basically um, protected all over that's because we have a lot of wallabies uh, roaming our area and they would munch on anything they can reach like any tree whatever they can reach they will just pull on the branches and munch on the um, leaves and that if that's not bad enough of course when they pull on them they break them and also I had to um, protect every tree I have in my garden until at least it grows high enough for them not to be able to reach it and you can you will see that you know few trees I have already big enough for me to remove the protection um, and you know I'm planning to do that with all the trees when they grow up a bit and become more resilient to the wallaby attacks now that's a uh, another veggie patch that we have here and I have a lot of stuff growing here I really like to um, occupy as much space as I can with everything I can and I'm trying trying to plant like on different levels so here you'll see this is a Kalamata olive these are supposed to be huge black olives once they grow and ripen we haven't had harvest here yet but um, it's only a young olive and it seems to be doing okay uh, also here is a uh, blueberry plants now these were very small tube stock uh, once I bought them from Daly's fruit tree nursery at like 250 a tube and this is the second year so you can see they grow relatively good if the soil is suitable there's one that is beginning to flower and I must say that on the right hand side of the olive tree I have one um, type and on the left another and I would have to say that this I'm um, can't tell you guys what the um, what type they are but this one on the left is actually much better it fruits with much larger berries than the one on the right so but um, it's good to have a diversity I suppose there you can see I have some cucumbers no point wasting good um, tents when you can send something growing on it and yeah I get cucumbers of it every now and then now here I'm trying on this end I'm trying to grow a kiwi fruit now uh, our area subtropics are a little hot for the kiwi fruit but this one I bought uh, because it was saying it's actually uh, suitable for subtropical climates so this kiwi fruit been here for two years again no harvest yet but you can see it sort of have some fresh shoots and I already got quite a few vines growing along the trellis so i'm hopeful you gotta have both sexes though for the plants because there are male and female plants and so i have on this on the edges of this trailer i have uh, female plants and in the middle there i have a male plant uh, just so they can cross pollinate and actually fruit um, there's some popos here or papayas whatever you prefer to call them i'm not technically um, informed as to what the correct way apparently there is a difference but let's just call them popos they're red ones I think red ones are more delicious than the yellow ones so again I just got some seeds and this all you know grew from seeds these large ones are probably in its third year of growth maybe less and this is just the one year old ones here they're not growing all that spectacularly here uh, the soil is probably not the best for them and I'll show you I have one that is not even a year old and it's larger than this and it's full of popos already so the soil is important I guess and also here you can see um, there are chocos I'm not sure I'm pretty sure they're chocos um, that's the fruit it's still very very small it'll grow a lot larger but chocos are great to grow they don't need care at all you just you know chuck one in the ground and it sprouts out and just it's gonna fill all these trilly here and there'll be a lot of chocos I bought some at the fruit market um, maybe a month ago and I could see they already sprouting a little root out of them so I just put them in the ground and this is probably I don't know three four weeks old this one here and so is that so I'll have more chocos hopefully soon. 
they grow very well. And so, you know, I also have in there, I have some uh, red Turkish um, capsicums. I love growing them. There's no fruit as such there, the small ones, but obviously they still have a way to go. I find them to be um, less demanding when you grow them, not as a red capsicum, which is just there. And um, I planted a lot in order to overwhelm the pests. So again, because I'm not spraying all that much. So I just plant a lot to in, in the hope that, you know, there will be some left once the pests uh, go through them and hopefully there'll be something left for me. And also over there, I got some eggplants. Again, I planted a lot. That's probably way more eggplant that I need and that I would eat. But again, my strategy is to overwhelm the pests and rats that we have heaps of here. So there's some left for me as well once they go through it. And here in the pots, there are three little plants. That's actually goji berries. I'm going to plant them in the ground eventually, but I'm just want, I just want to give them a head start in the pots here. So they grow a bit bigger and establish a little better before I plant them in the ground. So that's what they're doing there. This here is another one of my experiments. This is ginger. It doesn't look all that happy, but um, I recently changed the soil. There's a lot more compost in it for it. And I'm hoping it'll take off soon. Um, we planted just a few ginger beets that we bought from the shop and they came out. No problem. That's a rhubarb there. It wasn't doing all that well. The one closer to me has actually died out, but there was a bit of a, a bulb left in the ground. I kept it there and now it's coming out. So I'm quietly confident that'll be okay as well. So coming back here into the fruit tree garden, this one here is a yellow grapefruit. As you can see, there's quite a few. They're not ready yet, but you know, they are very, very impressive. Um, we bought this on a, like a discount sale. It was only 10 bucks and it was a tiny, tiny plant. Um, it was uh, neglected. It seemed like it was going to die, but 10 bucks was a you know, very attractive price. So we planted it and here it is. That's uh, the second year of it. Last year we did have three grapefruits on it. Uh, and now it's what, got about eight or nine. I think it'll be fine. It recovered and hopefully it'll grow. I did have to support it uh, because, um, you know, grapefruit is a large fruit and it's heavy. I didn't want to have the um, branches getting broken, but uh, once the grapefruit is ripe and we uh, harvest it, I'm just going to cut it a bit to allow, allow the um, main branches to um, get fatter and thicker and, you know, give them the ability to support fruit in the future, so I might not have to um, support them again. This here is the same. We actually bought it together with this first one, and again, this was a very, very small plant, a sickly plant that was neglected as well. Um, and you can see now it's nice and thick. So that's the second year, well, two full years, I should say, in the ground, and it's doing very well as well. We haven't had fruit on it yet, but that's because when it uh, sent out the new shoots, I uh, missed the time to spray it with white oil against the um, leaf miner and it actually damaged a lot of leaves and when that happens they don't tend to flower all that much and that's why there's no fruit so you just need to keep an eye with all citruses but you know probably especially with mandarins but with that as well you just need to um, keep an eye on the leaf miner and you have to um, take care of that if you want a good harvest and I'll show you um, other trees um, which I didn't miss to spray with white oil at the right time, they actually fruit quite well. I can see here that um, my leaves um, looking like that and that's apparently an indication of lack of magnesium in the soil or nitrogen. So I did fertilize this a little bit better only recently so hopefully they'll all look like that. Um, this is not going to change now, this one is going to stay like it is, but new growth is supposed to be um, a lot better when it comes out. And you can see this one is so large now, 
that I removed the protection against the wallabies because they no longer can reach the um, branches. So I don't have to worry about them breaking and damaging those. This one here is a Barbados cherry. Beautiful cherry, obviously from Barbados. <laughs> Grows very well in our climate and fruits prolifically, um, to be honest. Um, we haven't had much fruit of that one yet. It's still relatively young, but I, uh, fingers crossed, uh, next fruiting season it will have quite a few. I might have to uh, trim it a bit just to keep it from getting out of control because it will probably get a bit higher than that as well. And I had to support it at first because it was just getting so high that um, it couldn't stand straight and was falling to the side. So I secured it with this metal star picket, but I can now remove it, I'd say. It'll be fine. This here is a rescue. I um, dug it out at my mom's place. It was growing in a very bad soil and it was just a small sort of little uh, stem coming out of the rootstock. And now um, that's uh, probably one year in the ground and it grows well. We suspect it might be uh, judging by the leaves because we don't know for sure. This is probably is a grapefruit or a pomelo, I would say, but I um, don't know yet. Once something comes on it, I'll know for sure and I'll um, let you guys know what it is. So, um, carrying on further, now this here, these two here, is a peach tree and a nectarine tree. And I keep mixing them up, but I'm pretty sure this is nectarine, tropical nectarine, and this is a tropical peach. Again, our climate is a bit too warm, too warm for the um, peaches and nectarines, but if you get the specifically uh, suitable ones, you, you'd be all right. We did have a good harvest of both. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's a peach tree and that's a nectarine tree, but the only thing is, again, fruit beds, they love this fruit. So we have to net it to actually protect it. And also possums, of which we have heaps in the area, they also love this fruit. When it's in season, you can see heaps lying on the ground, chewed up and just uh, left there. So yeah, um, this one is flowering at the moment. It did flower earlier on as well, but I think that, that was my mistake. I added fertilizer to it, to it and I must have confused the tree because it must have thought it's time to flower and it flowered all over before it had uh, leaves on it. But um, no fruit actually set on those flowers. And I think now it's flowering again, um, realizing it's time for it to do so. And hopefully, um, we will have some fruit off it. The pollinators are here, so should be all right. And same for this one as well. That's a nectarine. These are beautiful tropical nectarines, suitable to our climate. They don't grow huge, but reasonable size and very, very tasty and juicy. Highly recommended. Uh, that there is the macadamia tree. I love macadamias. And I planted them here because they grow quite large, probably to the size of that. And I planted them on the outside so they don't create any shade for my garden when, when they're fully grown. And um, this one here is called Macadamia Pinkalicious. And it's supposed to flower with very beautiful um, pink flowers. Normally Macadamia are sort of yellowish, whitish sort of flower, but that one's pink. So it should look very, very nice. And it's also going to be beneficial for these other macadamia trees because they will cross-pollinate, which is apparently recommended. So behind here, you can see it's a dragon fruit. And um, I love dragon fruit. It grows well in our climate as well. And this one here is the best out of the um, six that I have. And this one actually had three very, very large uh, white dragon fruits on it. Uh, I personally think the red one is the best, but it just happened so that when I got the cuttings, I wasn't sure what they are. And this one turned out to be all white, but I'm hoping there would be some red ones on the other ones because I did have some cuttings of the red ones, but unfortunately I didn't know which ones which, so I planted them in a mixed fashion, hoping they'll be just whatever grows grows and uh, the reason why this one is uh, looks so much better than the others is uh, because i just planted it earlier and best cuttings went into this one and they really taken off while the other ones there i planted a lot uh, 
later on and the two with the smaller sticks supporting uh, sticks there that's only a recent planting um, because i had to replace the main um, timbers that support them because i used um, pine timbers on there and obviously termites got into it very very quick and just destroyed it so now i'm using hardwood and hopefully this will last a few years so carrying on this is a tropical apple again our climate is too warm for the normal apples to grow you really need to be somewhere over Toowoomba area or you know where it gets a bit colder because apples obviously need some chill hours but this one is a tropical anna uh, type apple and it grows very very well in our area this tree is not even three years old in the ground like again i bought it obviously like a um, plant in a pot but it was very very small and we had harvest last year so on the second year of growing i guess and this is the third year and you can see there are apples now some people say you need to um, pick out a few just to make the other apples go larger but i don't want to do that i'm just gonna leave it as it is the only thing is i'm gonna have to net it um so fruit fly doesn't get into it because uh, that's what will happen we do have a problem with fruit fly in our part of queensland but you can see these are beautiful apples they will get um, nice and round this is just how they grow and also they say you need to have at least two of different types to cross pollinate and i do have a second apple uh, tree here this is a gold, golden dorset as well suitable for tropical subtropical climates but in my experience i first planted this and didn't have the second one and i did have um fruit on it so i don't think it's truly necessary um, to have like a second uh, tree i mean i'm sure it's better if you have two but you know it's obviously got pollinated somehow um, because i did have fruit while only had one apple tree but then of course eventually i got the second one just to have more apples this one is a lot younger but um it fruits and uh, i had a couple of apples couple of apples on it last year too so um looking forward to seeing more apples on it i will be covering those with nets just to protect them from fruit fly so this one here is already quite large this is a full-size tree not a dwarf and in this garden here i'm planting the full-size trees because i have space this is a tangelo tree or tangerine whichever way you prefer to call it and again this is um this is it's um full two years in the ground it was very very small again but it grows very very fast and i removed the protection as well obviously you can see i'm mulching everything to make sure it gets uh, you know shade and the roots are cool because um, apparently citrus are a top surface uh, sort of root tree system uh, tree and you need to keep those cool because it does get quite hot in summer here so i'm mulching everything and um, this is what it is there is one one fruit on it but only one this year last year we had five or seven on a smaller tree so again i missed the time to spray it uh, against the fruit leaf miner and it just uh, you know when that happens um, flowers just don't get set trees sick and it doesn't like to produce fruit so whatever's happened but um hopefully next harvest i'll get on top of it and um, we'll have more fruit this here is probably ready to be free from the um netting as well but i'm just gonna wait a little more this is blood orange uh, haven't had any fruit of it yet hoping for um next harvest it's nice and large as well and again all the trees you see here they've been planted um while being very very small uh, like you know waist high or smaller so they really taken off over two years this is um this is a mandarin um you can only see one on and this is a beautiful mandarin also we already picked like six or seven of it and that's uh you know again one of the better mandarins to have you can see how small the tree is 
but it is a prolific fruiter and the mandarins maybe because there's only so few now this one here you can see that's the smallest one on here we picked the other ones already i'm just letting this one ripe a little bit more beautiful mandarin sorry guys i can't tell you what type it is because i'm um, i got so many i keep forgetting and the labels didn't survive but yeah that's a mandarin very very small but already fruiting very very well and this one here this is a rescue again i actually dug it out in my mom's garden it was in a very very bad spot and um it was about to die it was very very small all, all there was was the root stock and a tiny tiny uh grows out of it we didn't even know whether it's uh actual uh, fruit tree or is just a rootstock taking off but um, judging by the leaves it looks like it's a decent citrus of some sort we suspect it will probably be a grapefruit just looking at the leaves here that's the type of leaf that is uh, the same to my other two grapefruit so we're hoping um, it is a nice grapefruit of some kind or it can be a pomelo as well but we don't know yet again you can see here this leaf is crying uh, for lack of uh, nutrient but i did um, fertilize them very recently so hoping this will actually um, be looking much better once the new growth come out that's another pomegranate this one is a wonderful type and um, it struggled in here for about a year we weren't, weren't sure if it was going to survive but it did now it's growing and we trimmed it to have it in a tree shape and hopefully it'll progress from here we do have another pomegranate tree i'll show it to you later we had five very very large pomegranates off it they did crack because we had some rain in the you know wrong time but they were still very very nice and the tree is not that large as well it's only like three years old so pomegranate i would highly recommend they grow very very well in our area now this is a mango obviously being in queensland you know you gotta have mangoes in your backyard and you can see this here this is the stump of old mango tree we had here i would imagine it was at least 30 years old because it was quite large similar to that sort of size but <sighs> last year it began to get sick it fruited really poorly and then it just dried off and died out so i had to cut it down we suspect it either got old or got sick because it was old and you know this is sort of unfortunately gone but it was a beautiful tree and i think it was also grafted with a few varieties because uh, first harvest we had was very abundant and you could see that mangoes are actually different types like when you cut them you can see that they have different structure and even different taste so i suspect one of the of, of maybe more branches must have been grafted at some point and taken off so that was a pity to lose that one we really enjoyed it first harvest uh, when we just bought this property we had like i don't know probably 12 to 15 20 liter buckets full of mangoes we dried them we made jams we ate them we giving them to our friends there was heaps even though you know fruit bats also attacked it as well and the kakadus but there was enough for everyone it's a pity it was a pity to lose it but nothing we could do so i planted a few uh, other mangoes on my property to replace that and just to have some because they do grow very very well in our climate and this one here has been in the ground for just under a year and I bought it, you know, again, very, very small, hardly, hardly up to your waist in height. And it's taken off. It's got a few branches growing. Should be great once it gets established. <laughs> this poor fellow here is the, um, I don't know, Fayou, Fayou, <laughs> Persimon, Nonest region. Not doing very well, but I'm hoping it's only been in the ground for just over six months. Hopefully, once the spring comes, it'll, you know, spread out and we'll have a few persimmons in a few years. I love it. Persimmon is a great fruit and uh, it's very expensive in the shops. And I have another persimmon here. Uh, it looks a bit better, but I'd say it just drops off the leaves for the winter. 
We did have some fruit setting, up, setting in on it, but it didn't hold on and dropped them all off. Probably because it's a bit small, but maybe next year. Huh? Uh, that's the mandarin tree that I think is doing the best out of the all I have, apart from the one near the house there. And you can see these hips, they're not quite there yet, probably another week. They're still a bit hard and they're still a little bit green, but look, there's, there's hips. That's a prolific fruiter. And again, it's not that huge if you look at it. Um, so, love it. And um, if you spray it in time to protect from leaf miner attacks, it'll flower and then fruit abundantly. Can't wait to um, actually have those. I love mandarins. Of course, we have a few figs. And this is, um, you know, just four here, but in the lower garden, you'll see I have entire, like, plantation of them, like, probably maybe 15 at least of those. This is brown fig. I'm not sure if it's the right time for it to fruit, but it does have a fruit on it. Let's see what happens. These the figs I found. You really got to keep an eye on the pests because if you miss important point uh, when pests just setting onto it um, they'll destroy it completely there's some sort of bugs that first appear as a larvae and then they munch on the trees and they, they turn into some sort of bugs that just infest the whole tree and eat all leaves and tree has got no um, strength left to actually produce fruit so you got to keep an eye on those but otherwise brown fig grows very well as well in our climate and you know i had figs of this tree they're beautiful, very, very large, sweet, just as fig should be. This is a white fig. I haven't had any fruit of it yet. It does grow relatively well, but um, no fruit of that one yet. We'll see. That's another mandarin. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. That's actually a navel orange. Um, I love navel oranges. I only plant navel oranges because they're the best. The juiciest, the sweetest. I just don't see a point of uh, planting any other tree. And this is supposed to be a full-size tree as well. It's still very, very young. I only planted it a year ago into it. But you can see the rootstock is already very, very thick. Nice and strong. And the grafted part is um, growing well as well. So, carrying on. This here you can see... Um, this is a mulberry tree, white mulberry tree, actually. Um, it's doing pretty well as well. We did have uh, wallabies um, attacking it a few times when it was small. I opened it, um, removed protection too early, and they pull on the branches. Of course, they munch all the leaves, munch the soft tips of the branches, and they break them as well. So you can see I actually I brought them up higher this time. So once it starts uh, growing leaves, the kangaroos or wallabies, I should say, they don't, um, they're not able to reach onto the branches and therefore hopefully it will be okay <laughs> once it um, stiffens up and the branches stay in this position, I will remove the supports and it will be fine. I haven't had harvest of it yet, only a couple of berries, very nice and tasty. I must say that the white mulberry in my view actually tastes sweeter than the black one and it also doesn't um you know um doesn't have that ability to <laughs> spoil your clothes if the berry accidentally falls on you like the black one it's difficult to get that out so um white one is to go i'd say that's another fig tree i have that's um that's a brown fig sorry it's a bit um shady here from that huge walnut tree here or a pecan tree, I should say. Uh, this got fig on it as well, but I um, don't know if it's the right season for it, but it's decided to have one, so why not? And that's another fig. This fig is much older than all the other figs I have. I had it in the pot in my other house for a long time, but uh, what I done wrong, it actually had a lot of shoots coming out of the ground and I allowed all those to grow and it must have just, uh, you know, wasn't uh, strong enough to actually grow anything on all those shoots. And it just kept growing and leafing, but no fruit. So eventually I got it out of the pot, cut off all the shoots, left one, 
to keep as a main trunk and now I'm trying to grow it into a good fig. Didn't have a harvest of that yet and that's um, probably four years old. You know, comparing to this one there that is only two. <laughs> so we shall see how that goes. This is uh, another pomegranate I have and um, that's the one we had the fruit on. About five of those and they were very, very large, you know, larger than your feast. And um, unfortunately, those cracked after the rain fell, uh, when the fruit is, was already large and set and large. But still, um, we you know harvested those, and it was a little bit sour because I don't think it's um, ripened fully. But we didn't have a choice; we had to harvest them because they were cracking and it wasn't going anywhere. But um, this um, this pomegranate here is probably about three years old, just under. And it fruited already. I'm really happy with it. Again, I'm keeping this one as a single trunk tree and just letting it grow on top and hopefully it'll just keep producing well. Now the next uh, bit here, guys, um, <laughs> this is um, where we come into my failures. You can see this is the uh, avocado tree. That's a seedling that we grew from the seed. And I'm having um, not having much success with avocados at all, to be honest. They don't seem to be surviving when I put them in the ground. <laughs> they are apparently difficult to grow because the root system is um, notoriously prone to, um, well, how should I put it? It doesn't like uh, hard soils because once the tap root reaches clay it's not doing all that well in there it doesn't like the soil that is you know keeping moisture too much because they rot i don't know why my um, experience with avocados is very very difficult so this one is doing okay so far i now uh, only plant them when i can protect them from the winds and the sun now you can see i brought the um sun protection here a little lower because it, it's coming into winter the sun won't be shining as hard on it but you know come summer i will raise this up and cover it completely including on top to stop the um you know harsh afternoon sun and midday sun in the summer shining on it because apparently it burns the young avocado trees so i'm gonna keep it like that for a couple of years until it establishes that's that's another avocado tree this one has been here for just under three years and it's sort of looking okay but um, it's not as good as it could be at that age and um, you know it doesn't look all that um, all that well it's it's surviving I don't think it's dying but it's not as good as I want to have it but this is by far the most successful avocado tree I have on my property we shall see what happens to it it is open now it gets um, some sunshine on it but the sun is not as hot anymore this is now end of May and um, yeah come summer I will completely cover it as well from the sun hopefully this will survive now I tried a few different strategies I heard a lot about not digging the avocados into the ground so you know they have a good drainage this one is raised above ground quite a bit so is the other one um, hopefully this will help that's how most uh, people I saw online uh, you know being successful at avocado growing that's how they recommend to have it done you know if I had a very very good uh, fertile soil and relatively deep soil here that probably wouldn't matter but i only have about a foot of good soil here and then the rest is basically clay so you know i think it's a good idea for me to raise it and <laughs> you can see this space here that's where i had another avocado pile but that one just didn't survive at all and i decided to get rid of it and just plant something else instead you can see i plant relatively symmetrically in straight lines that's just to keep it easier to mow because i do need to mow this area and you know when i can drive in straight lines obviously it makes it a lot easier for me that way i'm a bit like that i don't know i suppose it doesn't matter that much but i thought it was a good idea now i step back a little bit to show you this this is a fijoya i hope i'm saying it right but i'm pretty sure fijoya 
is apparently a very tasty, very frag fragrant fruit and it looks very ornamental as well with beautiful um, red flowers. I've seen those, I smell those, they smell beautiful and they're actually very, very tasty too. So initially I planted those four there just to create windbreak and to have something joyous and then I planted this one as well and that's a different type of fijoya. Apparently, this one called a mammoth. So it's supposed to be huge, huge fruit. And that's the only one I have in that uh, type. Uh, because um, I bought all my fijoyas in the nurseries or bunnings. And uh, unfortunately, when you buy them there, uh, it doesn't come with the type specified. It just says fijoya salaviana, if I'm saying it right. And apparently, there's like, whole bunch of different Fijoya types, but they all seem to be saying Fijoya Silaviana. So I have no idea whether that's the same type or not. The two here on the left look a little different to one on the right, but I'm not sure. Again, I used to buy a lot of plants at Delhi's fruit tree nursery, and those guys are very, very good in uh, specifying what type of Fijoya it is. I highly recommend those guys. They don't pay me for, you know, endorsements, but I just like them and they have a lot of videos online as well about um, all sorts of stuff that they grow and sell there. Check them out. Delhi's Fruit Tree Nursery. They're located just over the border from Queensland, in, you know, in New South Wales. I, I love them. You know, a lot of information that I know about plants I actually got from them. Check them out. But yeah, this one is um, a mammoth and uh, <clears throat> I couldn't buy it anywhere. so. Um, I've seen it growing somewhere and what they've done, they actually broke off a few um, shoots of the plant and just, um, you know, rooted them, basically stuck them in a uh, root growing, like a cutting growing mix and out of many we had, only one survived, so it's very, very precious to me and I hope it's gonna uh, grow because uh, I'm really keen to see how big they are and how tasty they are. I'm told Fijoy in general is very, very nice. And especially if it's going to be huge, that is gonna be, um, that's going to be very, very good. And um, I personally like Fijoya um, as because um, it grows very ornamental, um, sort of in very ornament, ornamental sort of way. And it's also apparently good for hedging and screening. And I'll show you. I have a long driveway here, so you can see all along this driveway I planted the Fijoyas. So we need some protection from that road over there because, um, you know, there's a lot of noise and you can actually see right into my property from the road. So we planted these, they will grow up to four meters, I'd say, and we planted them, you know, relatively close. So once they establish well, uh, we will just um, trim them and cut them as a hedge and we hope to have the entire hedge here covering us from that road there. But also it will have a lot of fruit, I would imagine, because that's a lot of fijoya plants. Um, kangaroos, wallabies, they love to munch on it, so I had to protect and cover each one of them. But, you know, once it grows high enough, I won't care if they um, munch on the bottom branches as long as the top stay in place, that's what I'm after. So that's that there. And I have to say, you, you're looking at this Fijoya here. This is uh, the second year it's growing in the ground. And most of these Fijoyas you see actually grown from cuttings. That's um, in total altogether, this particular plant from when we cut it off another plant, is probably two and a half years old, maybe less. Fijoyas are growing very, very well in different soil types. And you can see here, you know, um, underneath there, there's a very poor soil. Basically, I just planted it into the driveway and it's doing very, very well. That's why I love it. I highly recommend Fijoyas if you have space for it. And then, uh, well, there's only a little bit left here. So this here is my grape. Um, trellis, but I don't have much success with that one. Um, I initially I planted uh, Bunnings uh, grapes here, crimson seedless, um, and some other stuff that Bunnings usually sells, and that's the only one that survived. And I haven't had the um, 
grapes of it yet so at later stage i actually planted um, black isabella grape here and isabella is growing very very well around where we are it's a little far but i'll show you over there just before the shed that grape there i'll actually show it to you a bit closer so you know what i mean so yeah this is isabella as well and you can see how well vine is established already this been in the ground for just two years so two years ago i bought one uh, cutting from the guy nearby which was already in the pot and it did have roots but it was like not even knee high so we planted it here and it's just taken off and absolutely taken over this um, this part here and um, last year we had only a few little uh, clusters of grape but this year we must have had a bucket full of beautiful grapes they're not seedless but they're just delicious juicy sweet and they grow exceptionally well in our climate they're not susceptible to pests at all I must say and um, I love growing them and they look very very nice you know obviously when you have a lot of grape on it terrific um, this one needs to be cut now since it's autumn I'm just waiting on it to drop off leaves a little bit and I'm just gonna cut and leave leave a few uh, vines on top there from which in spring it'll just send new shoots out and we'll have more grapes again Isabella highly recommended for subtropical Queensland it's probably the best to grow around where we are okay so going back to this grape of failure of mine um, we did plant Isabella's on the edges of the trellis this season they didn't have a time a time or chance to grow too much but next year I'm sure they'll take off and just fill up the trellis and we'll have grape here as well but meanwhile I'm trying to grow um, pumpkin here there's a few tomatoes as well I just don't like to have space wasted so I just chuck in the ground uh, whatever I think might suit this area here and you know while there's nothing growing there's no shade from the grapes um, I'm hoping to get a few tomatoes of that and maybe some pumpkin that'd be great um, I'll show you this here this is the pecan nut tree uh, these trees were here when we bought this property there are two one is slightly larger than the other and uh, these trees are prolific fruiters you know every year there's heaps heaps and heaps of pecans on it but the problem is the white cockadoos we i can you know honestly say we haven't tasted the pecan in three years we've been here every year as soon as they um, you know they're not even ripe yet the nuts the cockadoos descend here you know once they found it they keep coming back every year and they just spoil the entire harvest you know they munch off the uh, branches with the nuts on them they munch on the nuts you know there's not a single nut left after them you know throughout like a few weeks while the nuts there there's heaps of them here I don't know what to do with them they don't seem to be deterred by anything I tried so far and I obviously cannot net this tree because it's so big and it's a real bummer guys if you know how to deal with white cockadoos apart from you know suggest silly suggestions like shooting them or firing a gun every now and then uh, do let me know because um, I would dearly love to have some pecan nuts because they're delicious but I didn't have any in the past two years just because the birds got them all and that's a bummer complete bummer so here we come to the final row of the um, upper garden and in this row I initially started planting the um, dwarf trees because I had those in my uh, pots in my old house and um, once you know we moved here I didn't want to get rid of them or anything or keep them in pots anymore so I had to plant them in the ground but unfortunately because they are dwarfs I'll probably have to have them covered forever because otherwise the wallabies will destroy them now this you're looking at here this is not a dwarf this is actually a tropical pear 
I haven't had any fruit on it yet. I did um, cut it to stop it from grow, you know, growing ever higher because it was just going up, up, up and up. This plant here is probably, you know, been here. This is the, its second year and it's doing very, very well. It was a tiny, tiny sort of plant when I planted it. And now it's a very strong, nice trunk. And hopefully come spring, this all will turn into fruit buds. Fruit buds and then, you know, maybe some branches will grow from that and I'll have a nice bushy tree from here. Really looking forward to that. I tried this pear before. It's beautiful, it's sweet, juicy. Very nice pear. And again, not all pears are suitable to our climate because the pears do require some chill hours. But this one is tropical, so hopefully it will produce. Moving on here, this is of course the coconut. Now, um, these are dwarf coconuts. I wasn't too crazy about planting the full-size coconuts because, um, you know, I don't want to climb up the coconut tree to get them. I don't want them to, you know, create a danger of, you know, falling on my head once they grow. So I planted the dwarfs. This one has only been in the ground, ground for about six months. I bought it when it was just sprouting out of coconut. And this is Malay dwarf coconut, by the way. It seems to be doing okay. They're not too tricky to grow. You just don't want to overwater them and don't cover the coconut when you plant it in the ground. It'll fall off eventually, but until then, it needs to stay open. That's another Malay dwarf coconut. I bought this um, slightly larger. It was a bit more established, but um, wasn't overly large. But yeah, this is it here. And again, um, coconut is probably doesn't matter anymore on this one because it's well established. And I think if I just um, scrape the mulch off the top a bit, there's still probably be uh, remnants of the coconut there, but it doesn't matter anymore. It's well rooted and it seemed to be doing OK. And also, after I done a bit of research on coconuts, and growing them here, I um, ended up uh, having to dig them out a bit and actually salt them. Um, apparently, they love salt. Obviously, like you know, they all often grow along the beaches, and so they are um, okay with uh, salt present in the soil. But a lot of people actually recommend soiling, uh, salting them, um, just to give them more plant health. And I have to say, since I salted this one here. It looks a lot better so you know do uh, salt the soil um, around your coconut just uh, watch a few videos so you don't overdo it <laughs> you don't want to salt it completely but yeah add salt helps definitely this is a lemon um, this is a dwarf lemon i had it in the pot couldn't you know throw it away just trimmed it a bit and now hoping to um, grow um, <clears throat> Just a normal looking tree, although it's not going to be large, but yeah, um, it didn't uh, handle uh, replanting very well, uh, but um, it did recover and um, it's on the way now. I only have one lemon tree on my property, so I'm really looking forward to this one getting back into strength. I had lemons on it, beautiful, thin skin, very juicy. Um, good lemon to have. There are others that I don't like as much, so I'm not going to plant anymore, but you know, I only need a few lemons every now and then. And once this um, establishes, it'll have lemons on it all the time. It's one of those lemon niches or something like that, a lemon type tree that you can buy in Bunnings. It constantly produces lemons. There's none on it now, but it will produce lemons constantly once it establishes itself. That's the navel um, orange, and it's a dwarf tree. I bought it because I, you know, had it in the pot in my old house. Beautiful. Um, can't say anything bad about it. A very juicy um, oranges, sweet, large. Uh, we just harvested two of it um, back a few days ago. And um, navel orange, my favorite, highly recommended. Uh, I think they're the best. This is not going to grow too large because it's a dwarf. I'm just raising it up a bit, cutting down the lower branches so the top grows a bit more. So hopefully I'll grow it high enough, um, even though it's a dwarf, to remove all this um, protection from the wallabies um, and I can have, just have it free standing here. 
That's a dwarf mandarin. Again, this is probably as high as it will get. So I'm not sure if I ever going to be able to um, open it to have free access to it. But who knows? It's got some mandarins on it. But this one got badly hit by a leaf miner this year and I missed the um, time when I needed to spray it. So it has only a few fruit on it. Still a very, very good fruit size. You know, and these are nice as well. They have some seeds on them, in them, but they peel nicely. They're juicy, they're sweet, beautiful. That's another navel dwarf orange. And again, you know, you gotta love these. Look at them. Like that's the size. That's a large orange for a dwarf tree. And you can see this, you know, probably because there's only a few they're huge but you know i'm looking after it i'm spraying it with this white oil and um, hopefully eventually i'll grow it to be nice and big well as big as the dwarf can get but yeah these are great oranges look at them i i just love it i think it's the best you know, that's a good orange there it's another dwarf mandarin uh, this one i managed to take care of when it was about to uh, flower so a lot of mandarins got set on that. They're just about to be ready to harvest. I'm going to give them another week, I'd say, maybe a bit more. But yeah, look at that. It's beautiful. And that's a dwarf mandarin. Look at all that. You know, this, this is just the sun is shining into the camera, so you can't see it well. But it's got heaps, heaps and heaps for the, such a small plant. That's a lot of mandarins. Love it. This one in the middle is a rescue. It's a Tahitian lime. Um, you can see it sort of died a few times before, but um, it sprouted out and now it's growing back. This is a full size tree. I'm going to have to keep it trimmed so it doesn't get out of hand. But um, I just picked the lime of it today, actually. And these are the limes that get uh, yellow when they ripe. You can pick them when they're green or let them go yellow. They're a good alternative to lemons. I like to have a lemon in my tea, and this is a great alternative for that. Um, love it. Very glad it survived. So, I actually realized I, I missed a couple of uh, plants here. So, that's the black mulberry. Let me just get the right angle. <laughs> it's not doing all that well in here. It fruits constantly, and I, I had it attacked by wallabies before they broke the... Um, one of the branches I fixed it seems to be doing okay but it's not growing all that well again probably because it keeps on fruiting and I can't bear to break the fruit off so probably all the strength goes into fruiting instead of growing but that white mulberry there is actually younger than this black mulberry here but um, I keep it here it's already well established in the ground I can't bear to cut it down or get rid of it that's the lachi plant. This has only been in the ground for maybe six months. It's very, very young. Lachis grow very slow. And, um, you know, when it winds, the leaves, um, when, the, you know, with the hot wind, it can really damage the leaves. And, of course, it um, sort of takes away the strength from the tree. But I'm hoping this will take off. Lachis are beautiful, very tasty, great for our climate. They don't need too many chill hours at all. Nice and tasty fruit. And um, I also have another lychee here, and I suspect this is actually a dwarf lychee. Uh, I bought it in Bunnings. It wasn't saying that it's a dwarf, but the way it grows, I have my reasons to believe that um, it actually is a dwarf plant. This one I had a big problem with. It got infested with the um, parasite which uh, turns all the leaves into um, sort of really nasty looking... I can't even explain what it is. Like there's some sort of a leaf bug or leaf miner that just spoils the leaves and it just doesn't allow the um, plant to grow at all. I had to spray it with copper sulfate, with mild uh, mix of copper sulfate to kill off the, um, all the bugs and all on it. And I have to keep doing it for a while now. Just to stop them from coming back, I had to cut off all the damaged leaves. So this is actually all a fresh new growth, but it seems to be doing okay. And I actually had fruit of this a season and a half ago. <clears throat> Believe it or not, we had about seven or eight big 
juicy, tasty lychees. So um, I think it is a dwarf, but we didn't have anything on it last harvest because it was affected so badly by the pests. Hopefully now I'm on top of that and, uh, <clears throat> and you know, we'll have some fruit. And of course, pineapples, as I said, I love growing them. <clears throat> I stick them anywhere I can. It's basically set and forget. <clears throat> we did have a humongous pineapple on this one. Very juicy, very sweet. I decided to leave old uh, bush here because there's another one growing out of it. So hopefully this will turn into pineapple eventually. Normally you would get it out of the ground, of course, because once that fruited, it's um, you know no use anymore. But since it's got a fresh sprout here, I decided to keep it. And again, as I mentioned, pineapples are easy to um, root once you remove them from top of pineapple. And you just stick them in the ground, give them a bit of a water once they establish, and then you just forget about it and they just grow. Well, and finally, oh, this is a pink guava. Beautiful tree, very ornamental, beautiful trunk. And the fruit supposed to be very, very tasty as well. It's doing okay, but I do have to say that it keeps getting, constantly getting attacked by little bugs that munch on the trees. So you can see the new growth is, growth is fresh here. It's all okay, but, um, you know, then at some point they descend on it and they just mulch on the, might munch, I should say, I should say on the leaves and they just, you know, devoid it on any uh, growing power. So I spray it every now and then with white oil. Apparently, um, that's very good against against chewing and sucking insects. Um, hopefully, it'll eventually establish well enough not to be um, too much affected by occasional bug coming onto it. And then there is a little guava fruit here somewhere, but it's so small I can't see it right now. So um, I can't show it to you yet. And um, this is the um, purple tree that I was talking about, um, you can see there. And uh, this purple is actually just if not even a year old, I have to say. And that's, you know, how good it feels in the right soil when it's, um, you know, doing okay. It's far larger than the other ones I have, which are like over two years old. I'll show you a close-up of that in a minute. So here we are, nice large red popo. Look at the size of that. I'll show you for comparison. So that's it. If you can see it's affected by all sort of, I'd say it's a fruit fly that's stinging it, but I don't want to spray, I don't want to cover. I want to see how it's going to go when I harvest it. And if I'll find that it's full of worms, I might actually start covering them. But yeah, look at that size. That's a good popo. It's not, you know, far from being ready yet. And once it's just starting to get yellow on the bottom here, I'll have to harvest it to protect it from possums and fruit beds. But we are far away from that yet. And uh, this popo actually grew here out of seed, believe it or not. Look how large it is here. And it grew out of seed. This, this was the only one I had here. You can see I have a few more now. But all these I planted myself. These are all grown from seed as well. I grew them from seeds. I got seeds from the red popos and I planted them and this is where they are. These are maybe six months old, maybe a bit more, but again, growing very, very fast. But that one here just sprouted by itself, probably out of the compost that we got out of our compost, compost pile. And I know it's red because we only buy red popos. We never buy yellow ones. so. That's how I'm confident that it is a red, red popo, my favorite. You can see they all, they all flower. Apparently there are male and female flowers on them. Um, but um, all popos I have here, they all have fruit on them. So I guess I'm lucky. And you can see I had to put some support for it there because as you can see, this soil is, um, you know, it's sitting in a soil that is above ground. So I just wanted to make sure it's not going to um, fall over once it gets fruit heavy and um, because it might not be sitting very well in that ground there because it's a soft soil. So yeah, once it's um, fruited and I cut it, um, cut the fruit, I'll show you whether it was affected by fruit fly or not and I'll um, 
let you know. Well, this is it, guys. I sort of um, got down from the um, upper garden. This is it there. I appreciate you guys being with me. I know it's a long video, but there's a lot to um, show. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please do leave your comments. Uh, let me know if you um, found a way to deal with the white cockadoos, you know, attacking your garden. I'd love to hear it. And thanks for watching. And, um, you know, in the near future, I'll do a walk in the lower garden, which is even larger than that and more extensive. It's down there behind the house. There's quite a few things growing there, including some exotics as well. I love growing exotic um, you know, trees and plants, so I'll show you what I got there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please, you know, like us and share if you have someone to share with. Leave your comments and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.